What's up everyone, Take Down here, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you what to do if your PlayStation 4 controller is not connecting to your PlayStation 4 console. Let's get right into this. So this issue can be really easy to fix, anybody can do it, and I do recommend trying one of these easy fixes first before taking it to somebody to try to get it fixed because most of the time what I'm going to be sharing in this video, some of the easy fixes, most of the time do work for people rather than you just first thing you're doing is going to take it to somebody to get it fixed try one of these first. Now, some of these might sound like complete common sense, but a lot of these are overthought whenever people are having an issue. They just think the worst thing and then think they have to go and get it fixed somewhere without trying any of the easy, quick fixes. So, first thing I would recommend, if your PS4 controller is not connecting to your PS4, and you do have a backup controller is to simply try to connect your backup controller to your PS4 and see if it does work. If it does, you know there's an issue with your other PS4 controller. If it doesn't, you know there's an issue with the PS4 itself with connecting and sending that connection to your controller. So if your other controller works, but this one here does not, then I do recommend going on to the next step. If you don't have a backup controller, just move on to the next step anyways. The next step is to take your cable, your official PlayStation cable, connect it to the PS4, and then go and connect it to your controller here. Once it's connected, press the PlayStation button on the center of the controller between the analog sticks, and it should turn on the PS4 and controller at the same time, as well as charge your controller. So if it does turn on great, then I would do, once it is turned on, I would fully turn off the PS4, disconnect the controller, and try to turn it on wirelessly again. If that does not work, but you were able to, once it was connected, turn on the PlayStation 4 and use the controller, then simply go over to your settings, disconnect the controller from its memory, and then whenever you do have it like this, disconnected and try to connect it once again. Hopefully that does work for you. If it doesn't, it could possibly be just a simple, quick little reset. So for the PS4 controller to reset it, it's hard to see because this is a dark color here, uh, but right behind almost the L2 button, right behind the screw that is by the L2 button, there is this little pinhole. Take something like a bobby pin or something that's really small that can fit in there, press that button. Usually I recommend holding it for 10 seconds. So you're gonna press and hold it for 10 seconds. You'll then release it, and then you'll take the cable that's connected to the PS4, and you're gonna connect it to the controller, and then try to turn on the PS4 by pressing the PS button. If you press the PS button, it turns on and it works, and then whenever you disconnect the controller, the controller no longer is connected to the PS4. Once again, like I just said last step, connect it, Go into your settings, go under devices, and disconnect the controller, and then try to turn it on again. And most of the time, after the resets, most of the time it does work, and your controller now works with your PS4. If that none of that worked for you, there might be a bigger issue. There might be an issue with either the charging port or the connecting port for the PS4, or maybe one of the wires are loose inside for the Bluetooth. I do recommend checking that out. It also could be something with the Bluetooth of the PS4 itself. So if you are able to, and you do have another controller that does work, or if connecting the cable to your controller and it does turn on, you're able to use the controller, Go in and make sure it is connected to the internet. If not, maybe one of the cables inside is turned off. One of the, either the Wi-Fi cable or the Bluetooth cable, I recommend opening it up. But honestly, if you don't know and you're not advanced and you don't know what to do to open up not only your controller, but also your PS4, at that point I would take it to somebody to open it up and just check everything. Just explain that the controller is not working. First of all, share with them the controller and maybe they know an easy fix. If not, the worst case scenario, you will have to purchase a new controller, which right now, these are very, very limited. Because of the PS5, Sony has went and discontinued most of the colored PlayStation 4 controllers and only are making the white and the black controllers. And even some of those are really hard to come by because they're the only ones being made now. So people are buying those and there's none of the other ones available. So there is definitely a shortage of PS4 controllers, but at the end of the day, 
If you need a PS4 controller, it is what, $60 US, $80 Canadian. You can definitely get them when they're on sale around $45 to around $55, which is awesome, but I know a lot of people don't want to always buy a controller. So what I would recommend to do with the controller, if you get it from EB Games or GameStop, is to always get your one year warranty for the controller. And then before your year is up, take it in for warranty because they cannot test this there. They just have to take your word that it's not working. Take it in for warranty, you'll get a new controller and then just purchase the extended one year warranty for that new controller, which is only $8. So basically for a new controller, you're only paying $8 a year for it and getting a new fresh one every year. So then something like this doesn't happen. If something legitimately within that year does happen with either the analog sticks drifting, which always does happen, or it's not connecting to your PS4, then take it in for that warranty, and that's what the warranty is for. So either way, that is the way that I would do it. If you're concerned about having to pay so much for controller, always get the one year warranty and always get a new controller before that one year is run out. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope this has made somewhat of sense. Either it has fixed your issue with your PS4 controller not connecting to your PS4, or now you know a quick little tip whenever you're buying a new controller to always take advantage of the warranty situation. Definitely recommend doing one of the two. Hopefully it worked for you. If not, get a new controller and take advantage of that warranty. I'm gonna leave this video here. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one. Please take care. Peace.